The next talk is going to be all about how we create keys. For now, let's talk just briefly about why we might want to do it now. The most obvious reason is we've already got a TBM in a trusted location by somebody who has some idea what they're doing. If we do this now, we can make sure that there's a standard process that everyone in our enterprise has the same set of keys. Um, if we're creating identity keys, now is a great time to do it because whoever is sitting there clearly has the owner password already. So if you create it now, if the IT department is the owner and they pre-provision with an identity key, you never have to go back and create a new one unless you actually want more than one identity per TPM, which in many enterprises, that's all you want. Um, you can put it in standard location, fine. Now, another thing you can do here is you can shortcut key certification. There is a lovely architecture that TPM supports for certifying TPM keys by going from the endorsement key to identity key and from an identity key through a certified key command to any other TPM key. It's beautiful. It's high security. It's wonderful. And it is completely unsupported by any actual PKI infrastructure in the world. So one of the things that we've had a lot of requests for is something simpler that will just get the job done right now. We want to roll out TPMs. We have an application that wants a signing key. And gosh darn it, why do we have to build this complicated certification architecture for our one key? So for the short term, and we very much do not recommend this for the long term because it is really not scalable at all, you can create a limited set of keys that you can certify in the exact same way we're certifying the endorsement key. Our trust in the endorsement key right now is based on, I have created the endorsement key in a trusted environment. I know it's public hat because I'm in a trusted environment and I believe it when the TPM, I believe I'm talking to the TPM because I'm in a limited environment and I believe that this is really the, the public key because I don't think the TPM's lying to me and I have some mechanism, maybe it's sneaker net, who knows what, phone call to confirm with the certification authority that when it certifies this public key, it knows that it is the key that I've created. I can do the same thing with a signing key or an identity key or anything else. In this case, we create the key, we take the public halves, and we use the exact same mechanism to confirm that this key is the one that we're about to certify. And we'll make it clear this is a signing key, not an endorsement key. But there's not really a difference in trust here. Um, because after all, you should, if you're doing this, you still got to be in your trusted environment. Don't plug the network in until after you've created the keys and, and, and written out the fingerprints. But fundamentally, this is the exact same mechanism, and it is just as trustworthy. Now, once the machine is, is off and out of its trusted environment, you've got whatever keys you certify method. It's part of why I say this isn't scalable. This is fine if you're an enterprise that's just getting started using TPMs that hasn't yet gotten its certification infrastructure up and running. But realistically, at some point in the machine's lifetime, you're probably going to want more keys than the ones you created initially. And if this is your only certification mechanism, you're stuck. Creating a new key and certifying it requires rebooting into a live CD and hand carrying. You don't want to do that. So this is really a makeshift temporary approach but because the PKI integration is such a pain in the neck, many people consider this to be a very handy short-term approach. Um, and as I said, this is entirely optional. If, you're, if you've got a certification infrastructure up and running, creating a new key and certifying it can be done remotely with no trouble at all. There are very few utilities for easily doing anything with the TPM. The only set that I know of are Windows has this one, basically, start bit locker with, with the TPM set of scripts. I don't know what's in them. I have no insight. My assumption is that it's, you know, taking ownership and creating a storage key that it's going to use to, to, to encrypt a ceiling key or a, a symmetric key. But that's just an assumption. I have no insight. On Linux, there is a TPM tools package that came out of IBM. I 
seem to recall hearing a rumor a couple months ago that it might have been abandoned, that somebody would need to pick it up because um, IBM may have decided that they're done. I hope not because it's the most useful TPM utility set that exists. It's not comprehensive. I don't remember whether it allows you to create arbitrary keys. Um, I, I'd have to look that up. I haven't used it for that in a while. It does not support attestation very well, so it doesn't let you create identity keys, um, which is most of what I was using at the point that I was playing with TPM tools. Um, most of its purpose was things like uh, supporting Thunderbird with a uh, key uh, storage uh, protection. So for that person, it might in fact let you create like signing keys and storage keys since that's the same command, um, but I have to look that up. Yes, um, and, and, and Zeno's point is, is that right now they're using on the fly provisioning rather than a live CD, which he's calling flash provisioning, because realistically attackers are not yet waiting around for people to provision TVMs. We think it's good enough. And that really is part of the point. I'm here standing up and telling you, be secure, use a live CD, use a trusted environment, because I am looking ahead to a hypothetical future in which this might actually matter. Right now, today, this is not a realistic threat, which is why an enterprise that says, I want to use scripts on the network to version my TBMs, I will complain a little bit, but I'm not going to tell you not to. It's a, it's a choice to make, just know what threats you're looking at. And the, re the main reason I stand up on my soapbox about that trusted environment is what I don't want is for people to say, well, a script on the network is good enough for now and then keep using it for a decade because it is so easy when you are an enterprise, when you have a machine that you just bought and you just you know, brought in and you're, you're installing things anyway, to do it right. And I want to encourage enterprises to start doing it right such that in five years, if they are using TPMs, they don't have to then be real, they, they don't have to wait until somebody does notice the potential opportunity involved in this flash provisioning for an attack to start doing it right, do it right now, and you've got a nice three-year window um, to, to, to roll things out in which maybe by then we'll care, maybe by then we won't. I like to play it safe so that nobody comes around in three years and said, oh my gosh, why didn't you tell us? So, yeah. For today, I'm not going to lecture anybody on that not being good enough. I'm just going to note Ideally, we want to do better later. Yes, today, unfortunately, if you want to use the TPM, you are pretty much stuck programming the TPM. Is this unfortunate? Yes, and you will think it is even more unfortunate if you actually flip through it later. I know you're not going to be here tomorrow. If you flip through the programming the TPM slides, you will see why the statement you pretty much have to program the TPM in order to get anything done makes me sigh. <laughs> but there is hope for the future, maybe. <laughs> um, it doesn't need to be as complicated as it is. Getting something like TPM tools up and running and out there would not be hard. Somebody just needs to. Taking TPM tools and making it a little bigger so it has support for identity keys and, and, and quotes wouldn't be that crazy. Doing something like that for... Oh yeah, Zeno actually says, we're recording this, you can watch the video later. <laughs> That's very clever. I completely forgot about that. Um, so there are ways that if we as a company or the U.S. government or just somebody wanted to invest the time in building a set of basic TPM utilities, it could be done. It's reasonable. We've got half a dozen half-baked versions of this for various projects sitting in various repositories. None of them have really been regularized. None of them have been, like, we've got, there's a, there's a set of TPM quote tools that have been publicly released. They're part of a project that, that one of my coworkers did a little while back. It's not everything that I want them to be. They are not designed for optimal, flexible use, but they're out there. They're available took him a couple weeks to write. So mostly what we need, if we want to move 
past today's situation where you really have to do low-level programming to do anything with the TPM, we want to move to a world where there are higher level APIs, where there are convenient utilities, and right now there's nobody that has the budget and the incentive to do this and then publicly release them or open source them, which is what I think really needs to happen. And I'm sorry I haven't had the time to do this in my spare moments. <laughs>